What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to the Let's Play Silent Hill Blind. In the last episode, we we explored quite a bit of the school. We actually got the gold medallion, we put it in the clock tower, and now we're moving on to the silver silver something. Or I think we got the golden sun, right? Yeah, so we're looking for the silver moon. Uh, we've got this piano puzzle to, to, I don't know, solve. For what it's worth, I actually have not looked up the solution yet. I was actually thinking about it a little bit, and there is one thing I wanted to try that I think might be relevant to, to the solution, and I wanted to give that a go before actually, well, um, looking it up. Though I do have that as an option. And I know th there are plenty of you that are actually okay with that, just in the you know interest of time and everything. I also think, would you look at that? I'm fairly confident that is the silver thing that we need. But regardless, uh, what came to mind, I was thinking about this after, you know, the last episode, a birds without a voice. So when we think about this, you know, first it's the pelican and it says white wings flailing, then silent dove, then a raven, then a swan, and then a crow. So I think one of the, one of the things that was really important was they start off by saying a pelican with white wings flying and the color of the birds changes. Right, so there's the pelican, there's the dove, there's the swan, all three of which are white birds, and then there's the raven and the crow, which are black birds. So I think there's some sort of order indication, um, or at least limiting the number of possibilities based on whether or not it's a white key or a black key. I don't know if the key actually really changes based on like... Oh, so it does that noise for anything that's not supposed to be like an actual key, I think. So that's the highest one. There's this one and then there's the far left one. So when I look at it this way now, oh, there are f four potential keys, four potential white keys I could hit. There's this one this one and then um, this one as well and then this last one here so there are three potential white keys to hit that I think or that I think I need to hit and then two black keys there's that one that's not something I can hit that's that's one I can hit so there are three potential black keys and there are four potential white keys, and I need to choose three of those white keys and two of those black keys. I think the order is going to be based on how they're introduced in the story. So the first one is going to be the the pelican, and I, the only thing that I'm still uncertain on is which key correlates with which bird, you know? So the first one is the greedy pelican, eager for the reward, white wings flailing. Then came a silent dove, flying beyond the pelican as far as he could. It makes it sound like the the dove, in this case, is going to be one of the far end keys. Either this one, or this one, right? And then it's the raven, flying higher than the dove, just to show that he can. Hmm. Do you think maybe the pelican is this one? The dove would then be like this one. And then if the raven is higher than that, it would be like up there maybe. Um, a swan glides in to find a peaceful spot next to another bird. The only one that would be next to it would be like right here, right? And then lastly, there's the crow. Huh, coming quickly to a stop, yawning and then napping. Would that be that one? Well, I guess not, given it didn't open. Maybe it's just that I need to do like two white ones, black, and then white, and then black again. No, okay. And it's probably not a coincidence that the blood is on here. Um, it looks like there are three, you know, blood splatters on the different white keys. Surprisingly, this one I figured would be a key, but it's not actually, so. I think we may need to go back to this one twice. I'm not sure. But I'm trying to figure out, you know, which key corresponds to which part. 
And for those of you that aren't interested in this, you can obviously fast forward a little bit, but I do think I'm onto something at least a little bit with the color of the bird, right? First flew the greedy pelican, eager for the reward, white wings flailing. Hmm. I don't know what about that would indicate what spot it's in, right? Then came a silent dove. Silent? Does that indicate anything? Flying beyond the pelican as far as he could. I don't know. Would this be... I feel like it would have to be this one. Or this one. Just because if the dove is going to go beyond... And then the swan is later going to be next to a bird. It has to be one of these two, right? So then the next one would be a raven flying in higher than the dove, just to show that he can. We can do that. And then the swan glides in. Uh, I think we said, I don't know if it was this one or this one we hit, but we can do that one for now. And then the crow coming quickly to a stop, yawning and then napping. I wonder if, what does coming quickly to a stop mean? I don't know. There's only one black key that has those attached. Or it's like the, the blood splatter, you know? So the only thing I can think of is like higher, obviously meaning like the, the pitch of the note. But the question is, you know, how much higher, right? Hmm. It makes me think the, the dove needs to be this one on the far right. The raven flies in higher than the dove. Let's see how this sounds compared to it. Hmm. So if this, if the raven needs to be higher than the dove, the dove can't be here if this is still, is not higher than that. So this would have to be the dove then. And that would have to be the raven. So if this is the dove, this is the raven. What else are we going to have? A swan glides in to find a peaceful spot next to another bird. So if this is the, the dove, this is the raven, this would then have to be the swan, and this would be the pelican, right? The question is, where is the crow coming quickly to a stop? I, I'm kind of like imagining them flying in from the left towards the right. That would be the first one, right? Let's, let's see what we can do. <laughs> so the first is gonna be the pelican. That's all the way on the left. Then came the dove, and we said the dove is right here. And then there's the raven, who would be up here. And then a swan glides in. We're gonna go with that right here. And then lastly would be the crow. I think the crow would be here. Darn. So that, that wasn't it. But I'm at least, you guys can at least see I'm trying to work with some sort of logic here, right? Trying to decipher some sort of meaning from these words. Because I, I do think that's all that we're actually going to have to, to work with. Who will show the way? Who will be the key? Who will lead to the silver reward? Maybe, maybe I'll think about this a little bit more and then just make a nice little jump cut to when I finally try something new or figure something out. We'll see. I do want to give this a little bit more of a go. All right, guys, I think, I think I'm going to throw in the towel for now. I, I've been thinking about it a little bit and maybe I think the swan coming in and being next to another bird might not be the key next to the key that represents the other bird, but might even actually be hitting the same key twice. And I'm having a really tough time figuring out which one the crow would be, which one the raven would potentially be. I think the the logic process of it first saying like, 
okay, so the dove needs to be beyond the pelican, and the dove needs to be a lower pitch than the raven, is able to constrain my options a little bit. And that's kind of a little, but that's kind of where things ended for me, where there are three birds that represent three white keys. There are two birds that represent two black keys. And then that first initial sort of constraint on which, which keys could be which. But I think there's something more I need to read into that I'm just not seeing. So the highest black key I could have was here. And so I figured, well, the dove then needs to be below that. So the dove needs to be either this one or this one. It can't be this one because it needs to be past the pelican. So the pelican then has to be the far left one because the swan needs to be next to another one. So I identified, okay, this is probably the raven here. This is probably the pelican here. And then the dove or swan could be either of these two in the center here. And I thought the crow, because it says it quickly comes to a stop, yawns and naps, would be this one, but I'm not really seeing that. And I tried, I think, both combinations that involve these two swapping places because they could theoretically be either. Um, and then, of course, there's taking into account the clues of, oh, this one has the splatter, this one has a splatter. Like, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a clue as well, but I don't know where this one would come into play. So, again, this is also working under the assumption they're, like, flying in from the same direction, even, you know? So, I'm not 100% sure, and I do think I am just going to look up the solution in the interest of time. I hope you guys at least appreciated my effort <laughs> in trying to figure it out, and I'm sure there's some sort of logical gap that I'm, I'm missing, but hopefully it's not a, a deal breaker for you guys. Um, let's see here. <laughs> so I just started to look at the solution and it says which which keys to hit <laughs> and I'm fairly confident the keys that are making this sound are the keys I actually need to be concerned with because the the way the the solution is being shown which I haven't fully like memorized but it briefly was showing like a layout of the keys and which ones to press and I was like wait a minute these aren't the keys that I was pressing I think the whole thing might be it's only limited to the five one two three four five Oh, that's totally it there are only five keys and I've been working with the wrong set of keys the entire time okay Okay, with that in mind, let's think about my, my logic process again. So the pelican should be the fur, furthest left, right? So that would be this one to start. And then there should be two next to each other later on. Okay, so the same logic still applies that I was talking about earlier. There's this key, which should be higher than this other one. So this one is probably the raven, and this one is probably the crow. Okay, let's let's try that again. The only thing I still haven't determined is which one is the swan versus the dove. I would bet that that one's the dove and this one is the swan. Let's try this. So pelican, no. Pelican, dove, I think raven, swan, crow. That was it. Oh my goodness, you guys. <laughs> so that's what I was completely missing. You guys were probably yelling at me. If it isn't apparent, I'm um, sorry to those of you that were in the comments in the previous episode, but I'm recording the past episode in this episode at the same time. So I had all of the logic out. I just wasn't working with the right set of keys. Wow, that's, that's pretty surprising. Um, I guess I should have... I could have deduced that I was working with the wrong set of keys, given that there were specifically five keys that were making that odd sound. To me, that sounded like the sound effect the game would make if it were resetting the puzzle. So if I'm hitting normal keys, I'm continuing the puzzle, and as soon as I hit like a wrong key or something like that, or something that I can't actually play um, a note with, then it would make that, that sound. So that's why I didn't think anything of it, but wow, I... <laughs> I am at least happy that I was able to get the logic down, right? 
Like my logical, my reasoning was right, but the set of keys I was working with was big enough, was too big to the point of like, I couldn't actually deduce beyond what I'd already done. But what I'd already done was enough, was intended actually, had I not been working with the wrong set of keys. So, okay. Um, I'm glad I had that at least like one little hint that was basically like, oh, you should be concerned with the other keys. And I'm sure some of you left that comment in the previous episode and it would have made a huge difference, obviously. Um, is there anything we can do with it now? No. Can we like look inside the, the piano? No, I don't think so. Yeah, that would have made a huge difference. So thank you to those of you that did potentially think to drop that comment and be like, hey, you're, um, you're kind of working with the wrong keys. And with that, we've probably spent a good 10, 15 minutes this episode just talking about that. And it's probably frustrating for you guys, but sorry. And um, thanks to those of you that were patient enough to watch it. And I understand those of you that just skipped it. So now that we've got that, we're gonna head back downstairs, go to the clock tower and input the silver moon. And then our next clue was about the boiler room, I believe. So yeah, let's rock and roll. We gonna have any friends waiting for us in here? Or did I shoot them all? <laughs> so much nicer having or the ability to readjust the camera around Harry. Okay, there should be... I don't think I killed all the ones on the first floor. Like in this hallway area. Maybe I did. Or at least quite a few of them. I don't think... I think there's one left in here. Honestly, I should probably just take care of him. In a figurative sense. Uh, as in stomping and, and ending its life rather than a literal, you know, taking care of the, the zombie. Okay, so now we'll place the silver moon. Oh. <sighs> Gotta go to my party. Wow, when did I get on such low health? We're gonna use a health drink, just like prophylactically. <laughs> um, where is this? Silver medallion, a picture of a clock tower is engraved on the surface, found in the music room. Cool, so we'll use that. And the clock tower should probably switch to five o'clock now. The tower door is locked. The hands are stopped at five o'clock. Can we talk about this music? Do you guys hear how intense this is? That's crazy. Oh, hello. Oh, I thought I'd gotten rid of these ones, but I guess not. No, the other one. Oh, come on, that was three shots. Must not have been headshots, though. All right, well, I guess that works well enough. Oh, we're back on low health. All right, well, at least we, we probably would have died had I not used that other healing potion. So, or health drink. So I am glad that we did that. But now we can save as we've moved on to the third part of the puzzle. I really hope you guys weren't too frustrated with the piano puzzle. I do like to figure these types of things out for myself. Right, like that is, is something I take pride in. Like I love to solve puzzles and I, I do think I'm generally uh, pretty good with logic. So it's something that I do like to give my best effort and you know, really try and accomplish myself before turning to something else. Um, so thank you for understanding and hope you guys don't think I'm just like too stubborn or anything like that. Um, this is a blind experience. This is me wanting to get, you know, the fullest of, of the game, right? Not just a, a speed tour of the game for everyone. But now I believe we should head down to the boiler room. I would anticipate that things will be a bit different this time we go down there. We'll maybe be able to interact with the valves this time. Just based on how the previous puzzle rooms have worked. So, brief survey of the room. Doesn't look like anything has changed. Big red button is is lighting up. Valve is tightly shut, and that still can't move. All right, then we'll hit this, and now we'll prob after this we'll probably be able to move the valves. All right, it's a booting up. Okay. 
so it's presumably on. Now I need to do something. Right? If I recall correctly, the I need to open the door somehow. Let's take a look at what that one note said. It said, per my phone, Darkness that brings the choking heat. Flames render the silence, awakening the hungry beast. Open time's door to beckon prey. Open time's door to beckon prey. Ah, so I've probably turned on the boiler. And I, or the furnace, and I now need to heat it up. However, it doesn't have anything to burn. I think, as dark as it may be, what I'm going to need to do is head to the first floor, and then head over to the clock tower, and open the door there. Or something like that. Let's see here. Yep. So we're in here. Can I go down this way? Ooh, man. Into the darkness. Into the depths. Wow. Definitely a spookier environment. What's on the ground here? Are these health drinks? <laughs> I wish. Anything I can pick up? No. But would you listen to that sound? How unsettling. Okay, so we went under, down the clock tower. Now we're climbing up somewhere. Where are we gonna pop out? Huh? Where am I? Have I been here before? It looks just like the courtyard we were in. But that certainly ain't the same. Hmm. I don't remember this being. Okay. Hey, would you listen to that sound? Okay. So, we entered the clock tower in order to beckon prey, right? We probably summoned some sort of monster or something like that. What happens if we stand on this? Yes, no, maybe, maybe no? <laughs> um interesting so the whole map has more or less reset so we're dealing with some different version of the courtyard potentially we have to summon something or can we can we even leave the courtyard I wonder that's locked okay can we even go back down I'll try that but let's I want to first see if I can even walk out this door I can enemies yeah unsurprisingly yeah, I figured there would be one that was closer to me. No! The other one. No! The one right in front of you, Harry! <sighs> Wasting so many bullets. No, stomp it! Aw, oh, man. Harry, you're killing me. Okay. So, obviously, the school looks a little different. Um, just, uh, just a little bit different this time around. There's the storage room, there's all that other stuff. Um, let's, let's check out what's in the storage room. Anything of interest? What are we even, like, looking for in this part of the school, you know? What is this? A rubber ball. Okay. Gonna have to, like, play fetch with a dog or something? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what we end up using the rubber ball for. Should I reload? How much... How's my health? Eh, it's doing okay. Fluorescent pink rubber ball used by children. Maybe it's for those... I don't know, um... Like, tiny little ghost things that squeak a lot? <laughs> Let's see what happens if we go in here. This is where it was in the previous one. Oh my! Whew. For a second I thought that fan was, like, approaching me. That was... that was spooky. Okay, anything we can use here? 
What are these on the wall? How do we access... Like, how are we able to de access this, like, demonic version of the school? Oh, first aid kit. So we got a first aid kit and a health drink. Always appreciated. Um, I wonder if we're even able to... Ooh, look at all, like, the like blood and stuff. Clearly, some bad stuff has gone down here. Um... Can we, like, interact with it? A huge fan is rotating. If approached carelessly, I, I may be sucked in. Okay, so I'm probably going to have to use something to stop that fan from running, presumably, if I want to keep going. Let's see if it's marked on the map. It is, to an extent. Although it's marked as a place I can't go. Oh, we can go in here. We got some friends to deal with. Oh, what? What are you? Can I... Are those, like, like supposed to be cockroaches? Like, gigantic cockroaches or something? Dang. New enemy type. Okay, anything else of interest in here? Just kind of like a caged-in area. There's got to be some reason for coming in here. I mean, I guess it is a controlled environment for introducing a new enemy type. It's possibly a way of getting around this locked door that we didn't try opening, but very well could be locked. Yeah, so that would have been the case. So we were forced to go through there regardless, but still, I didn't even try the other hallway. That's something I'll have to do eventually. I am surprisingly not hearing the sounds of like enemies in the hallway and it seems the hallway is blocked off so it's a little bit different than than the usual experience can i go in the classroom i can i'm shocked it's not playing the enemy sound there's that one picture we saw earlier uh oh what's in this locker Nah, just scenery. Um, there was that one picture we saw earlier that showed, like, a door that looked like it would fit in with this setting. Uh, that had, like, the two bodies almost, like, hanging up next to it, right? There's a picture card. It's got three black bars and then a key on it. Cards are scattered. Okay, so we're obviously gonna need that for some sort of puzzle in the future. Okay. We got these guys. We got two of them. No! Harry! I've got to figure out how to aim better. Because clearly some of them are threats and some of them are not. What? There were three of them. Um, but i got to be able to switch between targets. Because otherwise I'm going to be, you know, shooting at the wrong one for so long while the other ones just approach me, right? And I've only got two more health drinks. And I don't want to have to be using first aid kits if I don't have to. Anything else in here of interest? What, what were they playing, like musical chairs or something? Nope, just another gauntlet with enemies. For the sake of using ammo and everything. Well, we can head out into the hallway. Very surprisingly. Huh. There's immediately to my left a locked area. Okay, so we can't access that stairwell. How about... Oh, is that a health drink? Um, yes, please. Okay, so... Still can't access that area. That's the same fence we saw before, though, right? Just for the sake of completeness on the map, the lock is jammed. What? Well, for the sake of completeness of the map, I've got to go back and unlock that door. <laughs> Otherwise, it'll bug me. Wait, it's locked either way. All right, then, I guess. Well, I guess that's good to know. Um, so we've really only got one place to go. Let's go through here. And we can. 
How lovely. Okay. You got one. I see another one in the distance. Okay. Two, three. We can stomp you. The other one is probably still alive. Can we get a stomp in? We can. Okay. So that was handled decently well. The good old infirmary. Only great things, only wonderful things happen in the infirmary. Can I... This is like a Pokemon game where I see a bed and I can rest in it immediately. Oh, we got another first aid kit. That's nice. We probably have like five or six of those at this point. Anything in this cabinet I can use? That looks like a health drink. Okay. Can I save in here? I can! How lovely. It's going to say like infirmary alternate version or something like that. Okay. Then I think we can head back out, right? Huh? Did it come back? What is chasing me? That's definitely the sound of an enemy. So I couldn't go in the courtyard that way. I'm tempted to check out the reception, the lobby, and to unlock this courtyard door if I can. Can I? I can. Okay. Let's check out this way. The lobby. Great. These things. Aw, oh, man! From behind! Alright, we're gonna finish you off real quick. And then... You're next. Tsukiwa Kimida. That's a totally different context, though. With a totally different meaning. Only to a select few, though. Shout out to those of you that get the reference. Um... Okay, so this is the exit of the school, presumably. What do we have here on the on the wheelchair? An ampoule? An ampoule. What, what is that? <laughs> I don't know what that is, actually. And what are these, like, cages doing here? Can I exit the school? Yeah, presumably not. But I wanted to check. Let me see... I wonder if we go to our item page. Well, probably. It'll give us a nice little description. So we've got four health drinks. Um, a picture card, rectangular card with a picture of a key found on a desk in a classroom. The rubber ball we already looked at. Where is this? Ample. Stock one. Relieve pain to recover stamina to high. Effect lasts for a while. Oh, so that's probably like a really strong healing item. That's pretty cool. Um, oh, it's coming from the reception. There's only one of them, presumably, and it hasn't noticed me yet. It probably has noticed me now. I think we're still doing okay on ammo. I'll take another look, obviously. Oh, we can't check that. Well, let's explore in here then. Oh, this is the door, guys! This is the door! Look at that! The two bodies on the side? The blood and everything? Clearly some not-so-great stuff is going on here. Can I pick up this ammo, please? Thank you. What else is going on in this room? Anything else of interest? Any healing items? Could really use some of those. Where? So, I'm pretty confident just from looking at the door, it's supposed to mimic that one half of the picture card that we have. And so, maybe, maybe that's how we access this other hallway? And after doing that, we can then explore, you know, the second floor and all that jazz of this alternate version of the school or something. Let's, let's try it. I feel like in a normal game, this would be like, I don't know, the entrance to like a boss door or something like that. Like a boss battle of sorts. But honestly, I don't know, but I guess we'll see. In the next episode. <laughs> I'm sorry to do that to you guys. I'm really curious. I actually really, really want to know what's beyond this door. This really creepy looking door. And I'm sure you guys do too. Although I'm sure plenty of you actually already know. Um, for all I know, it could just be entering the hallway and nothing's really going to happen that's that dramatic. But I don't know. That's, that's you know, the beauty of a blind uh, playthrough. But I hope you guys enjoy this one. Again, sorry about the probable frustration with some of the the piano key puzzle i hope you guys understand um i've really enjoyed exploring this kind of like alternate midwich elementary school right it definitely got a lot creepier with the setting change and i'm really curious as to what we're gonna find on the second floor 
right? Potentially the roof. How is the boiler going to be different? You know, this is all because we started to go and we turned on the boiler and then went in the clock tower and suddenly we're in this like alternate version of the elementary school, supposedly beckoning for prey or something like that. And then, I don't know, is there like a boss of these types of levels? I, I, I really don't know. But regardless, um, I hope you guys are looking forward to the next episode. But until that next episode, this has been Night Zero, and this mission is complete.